All right, hello there. It's that time once again to call out Spectrum News, New York One. Well, I will say today they have been doing a good job trying to cover the snowstorm coming up, and they did show Eric Adams' briefing today when no other media outlet, I guess, doesn't really want to cover it, considering that we may be getting four to eight inches of snow, which I will read this article at the very end of the video because we do got to go right into the crime because the crime is uh, as to be expected the usual around new year's and we will get into all of that in just a second we will go over the last uh, scanner call for 2021 we'll get to our first scanner call of 2022 we're also going to get into the other stories there were two that um we're actually around two more to wrap up 2021. They always say old acquaintance be forgot, but as we go into the new year, some of these crimes, as usual, don't get solved. So, you want proof New York 1 doesn't have crime? Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's see in the public safety. Alright, so they do have a couple things. When was this posted? Didn't know a girl was shot in Harlem. Are you kidding me? I didn't see anything about it on AM New York, but I might as well read this. Of course, no reporter, but they do send a camera crew. No surprise here. Yeah, here we go. Police in Manhattan are looking, are looking into a shooting that happened early Friday morning. This happened on New Year's Eve. Happened after 1 a.m. outside the Wagner Houses on 1st Avenue in Harlem. Officers say the initial investigation reveals she was a bystander and was shot once in her thigh. Authorities tell New York when an unknown man wearing a mask was seen running away. The girl's condition was not known as of New Year's Eve. So, didn't see this on AM New York's page, but... I think I want to read that, but they do have the cop that was shot on uh, yesterday. So, we will get into... um that so you got to read these two articles from am new york that were from last year and then we're going to read some important stuff for this year because this is not going to be a usual rant rave like you normally would expect because this is typical of new york one to behave like this all right so our last two notable crime stories for 2021 goes as follows. First up in Queens, a man opened fire on a vehicle along a busy shopping strip. Okay, so this happened on December 29th, which was on Wednesday. Law enforcement sources said the suspect opened fire on an individual inside a vehicle in front of 106-09 Jamaica Avenue. According to authorities, the perp pulled up the location inside a white Mercedes-Benz four-door sedan and then pulled out a firearm, aiming it at a dark car to Dan traveling westbound along Jamaica Avenue. Police said the suspect then discharged multiple rounds of the vehicle but did not hit the car nor any individuals in the immediate vicinity. Video footage obtained by Crime Stoppers in the location showed the suspect chasing after a vehicle, which reversed at one point before pulling away from the location. Following the shooting, cops said the shooter then fled on foot south uh, eastbound along Jamaica Avenue before turning onto 107th Street. So, there is a video of the incident, as you can see here. So, quick reminder that all these problems were brought to you by the previous mayor, Bill de Blasio. Which is no surprise. Probably another suspect that should have never been let out of jail in the first place. And probably got out on bail reform. Okay, so the gunman wore a light-colored jacket with a fur-lined hood along with black pants and multi-colored sneakers. So there you go. There you go. Okay, next up. And last up for 2021. 
to be precise. Two men wounded in Brooklyn shooting inside an apartment building hallway. So this happened on New Year's Eve morning at 4.35 in the morning. Officers from the 70th Precinct respond to a 911 call about a shooting. So they don't even... So what was the address? Okay, so it's Regent Place in Brooklyn. Okay. Regent Terrace. All right, 2016 Regent Terrace. Oh, there it is. Regent Place in Flatbush. But the name of the building is Regent Terrace. Okay, the victims were in a third floor hallway. One of the victims, a 34-year-old man, took bullets to his leg and his stomach. While the second, a 39-year-old man, was shot in the right armpit. Good news is the uh, men were taken to Kings County Hospital. Treatment of injuries not considered life-threatening. But sources familiar with the investigation said the two victims are being uncooperative with detectives trying to piece together the circumstances leading up to the shooting. So there is no motive at this time. Alright. So lastly... Oops, this is not what I wanted. Here we go. Just double checking here. Where is it? Uh, here we go. Our last report of a shooting in the year 2021 was in Staten Island. 1251 Bay Street. Mail shot, eight is likely. And lastly, our first 1075, well, our last 1075 of the year, in terms of fire, was in the Bronx. Two hours before the ball dropped. 2825 Grand Concourse. Now, to our first notable 911 call of the new year. This was in Midtown. Police scanner confirmed, mail stopped. At Penn Station, suspect is a male Hispanic with tattoos on his face, 5'8", 170 pounds, wearing a hat, brown jacket, dark Adidas pants, flood eastbound on West 34th Street. But then, this is where I took the cake, and this is when I was actually up at 1 a.m. Stabbing on Horace Harding Expressway, and of course... None other than Laura Uhl actually posted about this on her Facebook page. Confirmed male stabbed in the chest. Aid not likely. Suspect is a 62-year-old male white, 5'5", five five, tall, 150 pounds, wearing a black t-shirt, navy blue jeans, black sneakers, flood westbound on Horace Harding Expressway. So, Crazy how the 111 precinct had to respond to this. An hour after the ball dropped. And as they say, the rest is injury, history. Ooh, hang on. This is serious. Happened eight hours into the new year. In Midtown, East 50th and Lexington. Confirmed pedestrian struck and hit and run. Aided with serious injuries. So where was the media on this? This was a serious story. They should have been all over this. First hit and run in the new year. Where is the media? Almost ran to dare for a second. Caught myself. You get the you get the idea. You get the idea. Okay. Just confirming our first fire report of the year. Just want to take a look at Firewire for a second. Then we'll move on to the other articles I must read. Okay, just double checking something. Please stand by. Ha! <laughs> they acknowledged when Eric Adams was being it sworn in. Ooh! So here we go, our first fire call. 1034 Winthrop Street at 2.30 in the morning. That's what I wanted to know. And then this was interesting. Hearst Tool on Cross Bay Boulevard. Uh, serious vehicle accident. So, 
Obviously, New York won MIA as usual. And then look at this. Manhole fire in Queens on 57th Drive. Hazmat issue on Amsterdam off 77th and the Upper West Side. Lithium ion battery fire from an e-bike. The Upper West Side. Man, I mean, they've had a rough couple of days over there. First with that shooting and, and now this. Okay. So, two more crime stories I'm going to read, I promise. We have our first confirmed homicide of the new year. Woman fatally stabbed in Astoria. So, here we go. Officers from the 114th Precinct found the victim with multiple stab wounds about her body near the corner of 23rd Street and Broadway, which is not too far from where the Bel Air Diner is at about 8.35 p.m. last night. The victim was unconscious and unresponsive when police found her. Her age and identity are unknown at this point. Police sources said the victim did not have any ID on her. Sadly, the victim was taken to Mount Sinai Queens Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. No arrest, ongoing investigation. And then, this happened right after the ball drop. Off-duty officer shot right after the ball dropped, released from hospital. The police officer who was shot in the head during the early hours of New Year's Day was released from hospital on January 2nd to thunderous applause from police officers as well as New York City Mayor Eric Adams, New York Police Commissioner Keechan Swole, and Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine. A, battle of NYP, a battalion of NYPD officers stood with a salute raised outside NYPD Presbyterian Wild Cornell Medical Center late Sunday afternoon as officer Keith Wagenhauser was wheeled out of the hospital a day after sustaining a fractured skull in the incident. The solemn salute swiftly changed to an eruption of applause as he left from the wheelchair and proudly strode forward on, viol on his own violation despite having undergone surgery the day before. Wagenhauser was closely trailed by his family as he greeted the mayor before piling into an awaiting van giving one final thumbs up. No arrest had been made and Mayor Adams vowed that the suspect responsible for shooting Wagenhauser will be brought to justice. Okay, so details regarding this. Wagenhauser was shot after finishing an 8-hour shift at 2.30 a.m. covering New Year's Eve revelry in Central Park. He was scheduled to be back on the job at 7 a.m. later that morning. Dormitories at the 25th Precinct in full use, he decided to sleep in his car while parked in the Precinct's parking lot. According to Commissioner Sewell, Wagenhauser, a seven-year veteran, woke up feeling a sharp pain in his head and seeing glass shreds hanging from his car window. When he left the vehicle, an off-duty sergeant saw blood oozing from the officer's head and immediately rendered aid. Officer Wagenhauser was taken to Wild Cornell Medical Center where doctors removed bullet fragments during a surgical procedure. It is still unknown if the officer was the intended target and there's an ongoing investigation. During a January 1st police briefing on the incident, Chief of Detectives James Isaac said that anyone with the information should call 1-800-COP-SHOT. A $10,000 reward is also being offered to anyone provides information regarding an arrest. All right, so there you go. Well, right before I was supposed to read the story regarding news to watch for in Northeast Queens part, a friend of mine just gave me a tip regarding what happened at a subway station in Queens. A man passed away after allegedly trying to jump the turnstile. Like, let me see if I can shrink it down. Okay. <laughs> this is a joke. They're using psychopath? They're actually using the psychopath. Look at this. Whatever. Right, this is going to be a brief one. 
Man who reportedly tried to chomp the turnstile Sunday morning died after falling to the ground. Officers found 28-year-old victim unconscious on the ground at the Forest Hill 71st Avenue station around 6.45 a.m. The man, who was not immediately identified by police officials from Transit District 20, was pronounced dead at the scene by EMS. Camera footage recorded the incident allegedly showing the man attempting to jump the, jump the turnstile. Alright, so there you go. That's something disturbing that, again, you're not going to hear about on New York 1. Okay, and lastly, because I know New York 1's not going to cover this. Top stories to watch for in Northeast Queens. So here we go. There is a winter art show currently being held. The Bayside Historical Society is holding an open call for creators to feature its 21st annual winter art show. Organizers made a decision to hold a virtual event for the second year in a row due to the Omicron variant. The organization said it was looking for artists 18 and older who live, work, or attend school in Queens and work in a variety of media including painting, drawing, and sculpting. Okay, here we go. So the good news is there will be galleries, virtual ones on the website for the entire month of February. Selections will also be available at the Bay Terrace Shopping Plaza in Bay Terrace. Okay, obviously we know that um, the show went virtual due to the Alpha and Beta variant and also had the opportunity to show their work in storefronts at the shopping center. So, there is an open call going on until next Wednesday, January 12th. Speaking of Bay Terrace, renovations are beginning! So there was a press conference that was held back on December 14th in preparation for a $5.7 million overhaul this year. This two-year project will begin as early as March and will include an expansion of the main entrance, improvements to the exterior garden area, and a full interior renovation. So, Queen's Public Library President Dennis Walcott said, with these renovations, the Bay Terrace branch will be more welcoming, inspiring a technology efficient, technologically efficient, and will reinforce its role in the center of community life. I want to thank City Councilman Paul Ballone for his advocacy and financial for support for libraries in this district and beyond, along with outgoing Mayor Bill de Blasio, Queensboro President Donovan Richards, and New York State Senator John Liu for securing the funds to modernize the Bayside Bay Terrace branch helping ensure Queen's Public Library can continue to provide free access to information, knowledge, and the opportunity for all. Okay, so according to the Queen's Public Library, the Bay Terrace Library will undergo a full interior renovation that will feature updated furniture and technology, a new designated teen area, and a new state-of-the-art multi-purpose community room and audiovisual equipment, and a new ADA-compliant ramp that will give access from the 23rd Avenue side entrance. There will be a new HVAC system and an energy-efficient roof. And then lastly, there will be a new playground in Little Neck. So this will be at 251st Street and 61st Avenue. So this originally was broken ground back in January of 2019. This is a $3 million renovation, including new sensory play equipment, fencing, and a modernized space shower to replace an old cement wading pool. This was a project that was sponsored by former City Councilman Barry Gredenshik, along with Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz, who was at the time Queensboro President. So obviously, you know, funding from the project was made possible from a $75,000 allocation from Barry Gredenshik along with $3 million in continued support from the current borough president, Donovan Richards. So the good news is the new playground is set to be open in May. So that's some good news at least. At least we won't have to wait two, another two years. <laughs> okay, last up, let's just get into the snowstorm expected for tomorrow. Because again, New York 1's been on top of it. I'll give him credit on that. So let's read this article. 
Okay, so here we go. So we know right now at the moment, the forecast for now has been updated. Originally this morning, the National Weather Service thought it was going to be according to an inch. But right now, the new forecast claims from the office in Upton that all five boroughs are expected to receive between one to three inches of snow. So I'm thinking most likely here in Queens, I might get two inches if lucky. So snow is expected to fall around 8 a.m. tomorrow and will end by 3 p.m. And I'm sorry if you hear the planes constantly going by. I know what's going on. I've been hearing from the FAA that LaGuardia is quickly trying to get all their flights in because there's a rumor going around that tomorrow that's going to be a temporary ground stop at LaGuardia. I would not be surprised if that happened, but, you know, that's the weather in a nutshell. By the way, if you're wondering, Mayor Adams did hold a briefing today about this because, again, this has been quickly changing. Um, the city is not taking any chances, according to um, Department of Sanitation Commissioner Ed Grayson. We have over 700 salt spreaders loaded and ready to go. So, obviously, I don't think school will be closed tomorrow in the city. Obviously, if it's not going to be that much, I, I would think the roads are going to be fine tomorrow. It's just that, you know, pack some patience. Maybe use mass transit if possible. Because remember, there is no stay-at-home order. So, that would not be appropriate if uh, none of the above were to be available. Hmm. Look at this. So, right now, the heavy snow is expected in Atlantic City. But also, Delmarva's going to get a lot of snow from this. Possibly some parts of Delmarva could get 4 to 8 inches. So let me just check the NWS on Twitter and see what they are saying at the moment. And then we'll just quickly wrap this video up. So let's see what we got. Let's see what they're saying right here. Just waiting for this to load. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Now they're saying it traced to an inch, so I don't know who to believe at this point. One to two is expected. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's going to wrap up the video. Thank you for watching.